Good evening and welcome to Audio Tree Live. Today is Friday, November 6th, 2015, and we're excited to have with us David Wax Museum. One, two, three, four. <laughs> studio with David Wax Museum. Yeah, anybody that needs to switch up, you can go ahead and just start moving that way. Uh, thank you guys very much for coming out and playing for us, hanging out. Um, I would like to know about eating on the road. I know that it can be hard like, to eat healthy or at least to stay as healthy as possible. I'm curious if you have any tips for that. Are oh, you guys yeah. grocery people? Oh, Do you go to Whole Foods or we'll you know, Whole Trader Foods Joe's? Or? Bars for sure, but okay. in the car, we always have several boxes of sardines. Wait, are you serious? I'm serious. Sardines? Best, okay. Best protein. I will sit outside right before a show, 
squat down on the curb, crack open a can of sardines. And they and stay, and they stay for basically it. endlessly, oh. right? Because oh, yeah. they're salted. Perfect for the road. <sighs> right yeah. on. Uh, Charlie Others? over there always carries a, a jar of turmeric and cayenne pepper. Oh, for uh, just to, I don't know, clear things out? Okay. <laughs> Gives you power. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Gives you power. Other stuff or anything else, like pocket snacks of all kinds besides sardines? Anything else to add to the sardines, like kimchi, Ooh. pickles? Yeah. Those are, those are great to have on hand, too. Yeah, definitely. Do you have a cooler? Do you keep a we cooler? We keep a small cooler. That there's yeah. a rule that you don't open sardines or kimchi in the van. Oh, okay. Absolutely yeah, just just limits. smell. Yeah, for smell purposes or for <laughs> spill purposes, maybe Both. more so. <laughs> <laughs> Any bad experiences in that realm? Has it like ever fallen over or because no it's been half broken open? That rule. No, no one's ever okay, broken good. that rule. <laughs> what what other van rules do you have? Are you allowed to smoke in the van? No smoking. There's just they're different. Uh, you can ask for an FAB, which is a fresh air blast. Okay. And it can be for any reason. <laughs> you just need Whatever one. reason you need an FAB, just so roll just it down. Holler that from the back row. Others. That other one? van rules. I guys? like if, I like uh, that one a lot. If the baby is sleeping, we don't stop for a bathroom break until she wakes up. Oh, so you gotta hold it. because you don't want to wake her up yeah. and, and deal with what comes from there. You've got to get miles under the under the under you before before she wakes up. Yeah, so you just hold it. That makes sense. That's great. Cool. OK, thanks for sharing. Thanks for coming out. You guys can roll into your next one when you're ready. Don't lose heart. Yep. One, two. Audio Tree Live. We're in the studio with David Wax Museum. I really like that kind of raindrop uh, guitar tone that you have. It's really cool when you're doing that really quick stuff. It sounds, you know, like just little drips of stuff. Yeah, it's, thank you. I like the rain. Yeah, yeah, dude. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, okay, I would like to know if you have, uh, maybe for you two, because I know that the band's been going on for a while, different incarnations, you know, up to this point, if there was sort of a a turning point where you realized that you kind of wanted to do this regardless? I mean, that you wanted to make music 
your career, I suppose. Maybe it's a series of events or, you know, a certain year, some. I guess I'd say when we won this contest uh, in 2010 to play the Newport Folk Festival. Mm, okay. And that, that seemed like a turning point. I think that, maybe, I mean, I think I was already on this path maybe earlier than that. And like, all right, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. But it's one of those things where you're like, oh, this is actually, this might actually work. Yeah, yeah. Just because of acknowledgement, basically. I think, uh, yeah, maybe doing it and feeling like we, I don't know, yeah, legitimizing it from the outside, there I guess, go. and feeling like this validation, like, oh, yeah, this is, you know, even though we won a contest in some sense, it was kind of like there's an asterisk by the name, but I felt sure. like we can hold our own here, and I don't feel, I mean, you always, I think, struggle with, like, a sense of being an imposter. I sure. Think, and just like, this is, how is it that we're here on the stage with these people? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. I struggle with that a lot, and so I think, even though I was dealing with that to some degree at Newport, I think I, it felt like there was a chance, there was a, a, just a lot of different people took notice of the band and um, a lot of things kind of cascaded out of that. And sure. it seemed like, okay, we're going to be a nationally touring band. And like, yeah. it might be a small thing, but we're going to be able to do this. And there's going to be, we'll go to what, whatever random town and at least 50 people will show up. Right. You know? And that's, that's a, that's a imp pretty important starting point to be able to get to. Yeah. And like, you can pull it off. Sure. And at that point, then some sense of belonging or that people, people are interested in seeing you for you instead of just that driving factor that I'm just going to do this sort of no matter what that, like you said, legitimizes uh, touring or whatever. Yeah. And I think, I mean, we're, I don't feel like we have that mentality, like we're going to do this no matter what. Sure. And maybe also because we have a family and like we're True. doing it with our two year old. It's like, it has to, you have to, you have to balance out like, okay, is this fear really worth it? Like, is it sustaining? Um, is it worth the challenges of it? You know, and so um, we're we're kind of always negotiating that and thinking through that. Yeah. But I think I mean I had personally for me had a moment when I was living in Mexico after college where I was studying music where I was like where I had a vision in terms of like oh I could do music and I have um, an idea of like what I can contribute to the conversation mm. and feeling like there's this kind of I. I a sense of okay there is something that i can put out there that's like this really strange uh love of these two different types of music this mexican thing and the american folk music um and it, i think i needed that i needed some sense of okay i'm doing something that feels like a unique expression of who i am and feels like it's filling some role mm. that's not out there already so have you guys ever been able to tour down there or like I guess when you're down in you know southern Texas or whatever, do you have a lot of like Mexican fans or Spanish speaking fans or anything? There like are that? a good amount in the southwest and on the west coast where there's more. There's like and sometimes there's these families we'll meet that are like Mexican American families. The right. kids grew up in the states, but I think the music resonates for them particularly because it's in English. Right. But it's these rhythms and this from the style of music that they're familiar with that their parents knew or their grandparents knew. So those are kind of, that's kind of like the ideal fan. Yeah, <laughs> I feel yeah. Like when we find those people. They like latch on to us, and I feel like there's a real like uh, kindred spirit. Sure. There. Yeah, and even with you know having your own child, do you? What's the importance of like a multicultural upbringing for for her? I mean, do you do you think about that? I guess, or this is just kind of where you're at. Well, David's been speaking a lot in Spanish to her, so okay. hoping cool. to <laughs> kind of help her learn learn Spanish more easily yeah. when she gets older. Um, but I guess as as we tour, we stay we stay with people all over the country. Yeah. And like in their homes, yeah, cool. a lot of a lot of homestays because of having Calliope with us. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just such a nice, a nice way to. It's nicer for her than a hotel. Definitely. Being a home. Yeah. And um, that is an incredible multicultural <laughs> experience. Right on. So yeah. I feel she's seen so many ways that people live. Um, so I think I think she'll have an education in that. Yeah. Yeah, I would say so, <laughs> for sure. That worldliness there, you know, you guys are probably, she's probably seen more cities than I have, you know, at 26 or whatever. So, yeah, sweet. Okay, uh, thanks, Sharon. You can go on your next one. You ready? Can you start? Yeah, and we'll start just like that. Not the longer intro. Three, four.
grass as it grows around I hear the animals move underground I don't want to lose touch with the world I don't want to lose touch with the world I don't want to lose touch Kiss me like you mean it My life's a film but I haven't seen it There are screens behind these screens Where the world is flat as a magazine And everyone kisses like you're still 17 I don't want to lose touch with the world I don't want to lose touch with the world Touch and love it too What if this all ends in darkness? Unending night in the stars. Peace while I'm here, let me soak in the rain. Let me hold my hand in the flame. I'll set free what they tell me to tame. I don't want to lose touch with the world. I don't want to lose touch with the world. Touch, I love it too You're watching Audio Tree Live. We're in the studio with David Wax Museum. You guys can get prepped to go into the last one, and I will say that uh, the new record, Guest House, is out now. You can get it online and in stores, and they're on a national tour all the way through the end of December for just a quick break for Thanksgiving. Uh, and she was tonight, so if you're in or around the Chicago area, you can check them out and take it away when you're ready, guys. Real people clapping, or is it like <laughs> <laughs> people always ask that? It is, um, it is real, okay. they are real humans. Okay. Uh, we should just right amp there? them up, yeah, they're right there. <laughs> it's all the people in that room. <laughs> it is funny though, because it's all just depending on maybe how much their hands feel like clapping against each other or whatever, you know, like how loud it is or how proper it is. This is the first one of these video recorded thingies that gave us sandwiches when we arrived. Oh, good. Isn't well, that crazy? Glad. Yeah. But well, I mean, maybe not though. Cheers I mean, to you. yeah. Well, we thank you very much. very much. Yeah, absolutely. There's also beer and like water and stuff. I know. So if you need I didn't that. mention that on air. But okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just case. Only for you. All right. I think we're good. Everybody good? Yeah. <clears throat> Whoa.
Shubas tonight, get the new record, and see them uh, on tour through the rest of the year. Thank you guys very much for performing Thank for us. Thanks for having us. us. Yeah. Uh, thanks to awesome people in the studio and sound engineers, camera and lighting crew, hooking it up, and viewers. Thanks for watching. You can support the band by downloading the session when it comes out in a few weeks and send a shot by social media to us for the band if you just want to connect. From all of us here at the Audio Tree Studio, thanks for tuning in. Goodbye. <laughs>